Good day to everyone. Today we will see how surge protection device works and how to fix it on single phase and three phase distribution boards. First we will see how wires are connected in a single phase distribution board. Main switch, RCD or trip switch and then the miniature circuit breakers are fixed like this in the board. From the meter, phase and neutral wires come to the bottom of the main switch and then from top of it to the top of the RCD. Some have doubt on which side of main switch should get the lines first from the meter. Normally three phase main switches show on its side where the load and the line should be connected but not on some single phase switches. However, most single phase switches show arrow mark pointing down with one, two, three, four numbers marked starting from top making it clear that main line and terminals are on top. RCD neutral out terminal is connected to neutral bar. Bus bar is connected to the RCD phase outlet and to the bottom inlet terminals of miniature circuit breakers. Breaker line outs go to the loads and come back to the neutral bar. Earth wires from plug base lines are connected to the earth bar and from there to the earth grounding pole. Now we need to remove wires on top connecting main switch to the RCD. Neutral line connecting RCD to the neutral bar also need to be removed temporally. That was done since we need to fix the SPD between the main switch and the RCD. Now the RCD and the breakers need to be moved to the right. Then fix the SPD to the space provided. Phase and neutral terminals of main switch need to be connected to the SPD. The SPD phase and neutral terminals to be connected to the top of the RCD marked as one and neutral. Now you will see this SPD is actually connected parallel to the MCB. Even if we connect the SPD in an alternative method like this is okay. Requirement is to get it connected after the main switch to make sure it can be isolated for any repair work. At the bottom of SPD you will see protective earth is marked as PE and also you need to know that this point is made after joining the two line ends of SPD together from inside. SPD earth point needs to be connected to the earth bar with a 10 square millimeter earth wire. Manufacturers recommend at least 10 square millimeter wire for this since very large current in a sudden voltage spike need to be grounded within few microseconds on this wire. If earth wire from earth bar to the earth rod is 6 square millimeters or less, we need to replace it too with a 10 square millimeter wire. In a situation where this is not possible, we can introduce a new earth grounding rod to the nearest possible location and connect SPD earth terminal to it with 10 square millimeter earth wire. Now we can consider three phase distribution board for SPD fixing. The space already provided for SPD between main switch and RCD. Earth wires are already connected here and we will assume that this earth bar is connected to the earth grounding rod with specified 10 square millimeter earth wire. Now the four lines from the meter connected to the bottom of the main switch terminals. Then from top of the main switch, three main lines and the neutral line connected to the RCD terminals on top. Three main lines taken out from the RCD will go to the load breakers and the neutral line is connected to the neutral bar. Now the SPD is fitted to the box. Four lines need to be connected to the L1, L2, L3 and N terminals. Although it is shown lines for SPD are tapped directly from the four lines, you need to take the connection from the B top terminals as shown previously in single phase DB. Now you will see this SPD is actually connected parallel to the MCB. P or protective earth terminal is made joining the four L1, L2, L3 and N terminal connection ends together. In some SPDs you will see two earth terminals exist but connecting one of it to the earth bar is enough. Now the SPD earth terminal is connected to the earth bar with a 10 square millimeter wire making total SPD grounding path occupy 10 square millimeter size earth wires. As a general safety rule Length between first terminal of main switch and the earth rod terminal should be 0.5 meters or less. You will see that three fuses arranged on the three live wires above the SPD. 63 to 80 ampere fuse is recommended by manufacturers, mainly to protect the three phase line and the connected equipment from a failed or burnt SPD. If the inner parts of a SPD burn and short circuited, there is a risk of short circuiting of the three phase lines connected to it. 
To avoid that and isolate the burnt SPD from the circuit without affecting the main line, we need separate fuses for three lines on SPD like this. Now we will see how a sudden voltage spike appears on the voltage sine wave. Here the normal voltage sine wave shows maximum voltage value of 325 volts, that is in UK and Europe where RMS value being 230 volts. Periodic time or the time taken for one sine wave will be 1 over frequency. Frequency is 50 Hz. Then the time taken for one sine wave is 0.02 seconds or 20 milliseconds. Now you saw a sudden voltage spike developed. But in a fraction of a second it is disappeared making sine wave back to normal. Compared to the 20 milliseconds taken for one sine wave to complete, you will see that these spikes appear and disappear within few microseconds only. These voltage spikes can appear not only when lightning occurs, but also when a motor starts off or some other defects on supply line beyond our control. We need to ground this large current developed by a sudden voltage spike within same short time period to make sure no damage done to electronic and other equipment connected to the lines. That is why we introduce USPD with specific items assembled inside of it, especially for this purpose. On SPD cover it shows, UC as 385 volts, IN as 20 kA, IMAX as 40 kA, and UP less than or equal to 2.0 kV. The main inner components in USPD are namely MOV, that is metal oxide varistor, TV's diode, that is transient voltage suppression diode, GDT, that is gas discharge tube, and spark gap. The first one is metal oxide varistor tube, and also known as VDR or voltage dependent resistor. It is normally has very high, near infinity resistance and do not allow any current to pass through it. But when reaching preset value of voltage, resistance of the MOV suddenly drops allowing large current to flow through it. Second one, TV's diode 2 will not allow any current to pass through it, till it reaches certain preset voltage value. When applied to an instant high voltage, it too will allow the resultant large current to flow through it. Third one is gas discharge tube. Electrodes in GDT are filled with a special gas and will allow current to flow across its electrodes, only when high voltage is applied to it. These special characteristics of GDTs are used with other similar components to manufacture SPDs. Fourth one spark gap, two has electrodes with very small gaps between them, and do not allow any current to pass through it. But when applied to a very high sudden voltage, electrodes allow the resultant large current to flow across the gap instantly. All these components are very much similar in characteristics, and by assembling those together in such way can produce a very effective surge protective device. Now let's see, what is marked on the cover of the SPD? UC is the maximum continuous voltage we will receive, after installing this SPD parallel to the line. Here, U indicates voltage since V is used to measure voltage in volts. In this case, any sudden spike in voltages above 385 volts across the main lines will make this SPD to operate and bypass the resultant current to the ground instantly. It seems that 385 volts is little on the high side when compared with the RMS voltage of 230 volts, but comparing with the maximum voltage value of 325 volts, it is only an 18% increment. If we keep UC at a near value to 325 volts, this SPD will operate too many times unnecessarily making it weaker and fail prematurely. IN is the current rating of this device. Like any other device, SPDs also will fail after certain operating time period. If IN shows 20 kA, it means that this SPD can handle 20,000 amperes or nearer amount for approximately 15 times before it gets weakened and ultimate failure. Then for IMAX, it is the maximum current this SPD can handle before it fails. If IMAX shows 40 kA, this SPD will bypass a maximum of 40,000 amperes to the ground instantly. But it has reached the critical level of current it can handle, and the inner components will fail in most cases making this SPD ineffective thereafter. In a situation like this, the light green indicator on top will turn red, to show that this SPD is no longer is performing. UP is the maximum voltage protection level this SPD can handle. If UP shows 2.0 kV, 
This SPD will absorb a maximum transient voltage spike at 2000 volts, and the resultant high current will be grounded instantly through Earth system, allowing only 385 volts remain in main lines. However, during a direct lightning strike, there can be currents reaching 50,000 to 100,000 or even more amperes on a main line. It is far more than the indicated IMAX value on SPD, and the failure of it is certain in an extreme situation like that. So, it is wiser to keep electronic items isolated from the main supply line for a while during lightning strike, even when you have SPD installed on the system. Hope you have understood well about the surge protection device now. If this video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.